This map that we have been using has been an absolute treasure trove of information regarding things that we have found in Antarctica. But today, I'm going to show something else I missed. And I can't believe I missed it. It has to do with the language being used here. This region down here, at the bottom, that says Siticorum Regio. Now, the first word, Siticorum, I had never heard before. So I looked it up, and initially it takes you to this plant that exists only in Caribbean regions. It's very colorful, reds and blues and yellows, and from a distance, it can kind of look like a parrot or a parakeet, a brightly colored bird. So that's where the name came from. Well, this other word, regio, I just glossed over it, not looking close enough at it, and man, I'll tell you what, will you guys see this? You're not going to believe it. Siticorum regio means royal parrot or royal parakeet. I had just let it go right over my head thinking region. Maybe they left off the N or something. It means royal. So when you type in royal parrot or royal parakeet, guess what comes up? We'll get to this in a minute, but you're not going to believe this. This thing called the Royal Parrot Finch. Now, this is definitely not a parrot or a parakeet. It's a finch. But it has a lot of different colors to it. The red and the blue. And it's not a very big animal. But it's native and endemic to this place called Vanuatu Island. Now, many of you have asked, why have I stopped doing the videos about the whole Pentagon thing, the connecting structures around the world. Well, I haven't stopped doing the investigation. I just haven't done videos about it. And I was getting ready to do a new one. One of the locations, one of the key locations that I found for this Stargate network is on Vanuatu Island. And this is the only place this bird is found. Now, here's something that is going to blow your mind. I want you to look really closely at this bird, the head shape. This is a location I found in Antarctica, totally, completely unrelated. Can you possibly make the allegation that there is no connection there. And I'll give you the location and the year 1022 2012. I'll give you the location. You can go with Google Earth Pro and you can find this bird head image and you can correlate it to this thing called the Royal Parrot Finch. Now, I'm not making the allegation that they're still in Antarctica. The allegation I'm making is that they used to be in Antarctica. And people made veneration to them. They made images of them, whether they were statues or wall carvings or whatever. And someone, a map maker, Petrus Bertius, created a map in the early 1600s and wrote the word Siticorum Regio, royal, I think he means here, parrot finch. Not royal parrot, but royal parrot finch. Because I can show images from Antarctica that literally look exactly, exactly like that image. I don't know how anyone could look at this and not see the same dang bird. Now, and here's, here's another example of it. They come in a lot of different colors. See if I can move this over here real quick. Well, it's not going to let me do it. I'll just put this back up. You can see the shape of the head is virtually identical. This is what I really think they were talking about. Now, in this region also, 
I wanted to show something. And I forgot to mention it like three times I've done this, and I forgot to mention this. I want you to look at this, and I know it's a strange image right here. The first thing I saw when I look at this is like, I've seen this image before. Think of this part here as the head of a man, his body, and his hands and arms outstretched, either giving something or worshiping something. Now, I know that's a stretch. Like, where do you get that, Mikey? How could you possibly get that? Well, in this region right here where I showed this, this bird head, there is another one here. And another one here. This one here is kind of on its side. Let me see if I can spin this around so you can see it. There's the nose and the two eyes. And another one here. Now, the worshipping part. There is another location where I can show that exact same image of, I guess, for lack of a better term, prostration or hands outstretched in worship, or something like that. Watch this. And this I found about a year ago, and I've used it multiple times. Look at this guy down here. Hands outstretched, head back. And what's right in the region? One bird, two bird's heads, three. This one's getting ready to take off. Another giant one over here. And what you could possibly make the allegation that this is one as well. Seeing one? Eh, okay, maybe. Seeing two? No, eh, that's even more than a coincidence. Seeing four or five, seeing them in multiple locations, and then having a 16th century map maker right royal parrot finch on a map and then being able to literally find the head of a royal parrot finch scrawled into a wall or a sculpture made of one whatever it is the chances of that are almost i i don't know what they would be but real quick i would like to show this location on vanuatu island now, you'd have to ask a question. You would be like, how the heck could you get from Vanuatu Island to Antarctica? Well, they did have this thing called a Stargate. And this was the, the find, for some strange reason, out here in the middle of this forest. Trees do not grow in this weird five-sided shape. Now, it's not a classic pentagon. That's true. Some of these aren't. But over time, I think it's just been one of these things where they don't show up perfectly because it's been out of use for so long. And this location correlates with a lot of others that I don't have the, uh, the lines up for because I just try to keep the screen not looking like a giant ball of spaghetti. But this location in Vanuatu correlates directly with the location in Blythe. This area where we found in the uh, desert southwest of the United States. There's just too many parallels, way too many parallels for this to all be some kind of a um, coincidence. And the last thing I'll show, I think the last place that I left off with the at least public investigation of um, the Pentagon networks is this northern network that correlates to Iceland. 
there's a tool available online, and I don't know if I still have it up or not. Yes, I do. It's a map tunneling tool, and I'll give you the link to this so that you can go here for yourself. Iceland, if you were to draw a line directly through the globe and come out the other side, would come out at the Stargate that we found. And you can do that for yourself here. You can do that with any location. You just basically move the uh, line around on one side and it correlates around on the other map and then you can zoom in and see where you're at. One of the strangest things is that there's a city out in the middle of nowhere in Brazil named Polo Norte, which literally means North Pole. If you draw that line directly through the globe, it comes out at the Paracel Islands off the coast of China. Those area, that area that's so contested with all of these uh, freedom of navigation exercises the Navy is doing and these fake islands that China is building. If you draw a line straight through the globe to the other side, there's a city that says Polo Norte, meaning North Pole. If they have already some information about there being a future upcoming pole flip, it would explain both things. Because after something like that would happen, there would, of course, be all of this upheaval and problem. And you would need to have some locations demarcated out so that you would know exactly where the poles would be. So the last place I'll leave is this. I think science might be partially right about something and partially wrong about something. They've dug these ice cores that show Antarctica having been frozen over for millions of years. Well, it's one tiny sample of one tiny location in Antarctica. What if during an ice age someone had visited North America and they had dug a core somewhere near St. Mount McKinley or Denali, whatever you want to call it. You would show ice, snow, and rock up there at those high elevations year round, going back hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years, because of the elevation. Well, where they're drilling the ice core in Antarctica to get all this information is way out on the western ice sheet where the elevations are super high. There may have been a time that this continent was partially temperate and tropical, but also had higher elevations that were permanently covered with snow and ice. So you couldn't really take that one location and say it was an indicator of the weather everywhere. Also, if my allegation about the tip of South America and the Antarctic Peninsula having been connected is true, you see these storms that circle Antarctica? That wouldn't have necessarily been the case. There would have been areas, but the currents would have been completely different. And we all know that currents are what really drive the weather, ocean currents. So there could have been regions just to the, the west and just to the east of the peninsula where it met Tierra del Fuego that were temperate and warm because there was no flowing water through there. I think honestly when that broke through and all of that stormy weather has a chance now to completely envelop the continent, it would explain why it got so icy and snowy so quick just over a matter of a couple hundred years and why they're seeing what they're seeing. So, anyway, just a theory I'd like to put out there. It would make sense to what the maps say. It would make sense to what we're physically seeing with our own eyes. And to also what science is saying. All three things would come together. And I guess I'll just leave that there.
Like, share, subscribe.